not tag. I pull out not tag stuffing. Carefully, I fill her with my paintings, hiding them so Mac won't sell them. She's large, bigger than Bob, but I still have to crumple a few of them. Bob tries to settle on her for a nap. You've killed her, he complains. I had to, I say. I miss your stomach, Bob admits. It's so spacious. When Julia arrives, she notices that I've used up my paints and paper. Wow, Julia shakes her head. You are one serious artist, Ivan. One more thing. My finger painting has sold for $40 with frame. Mac is happy. He brings me a huge pile of paper and a big buckets of paint. Get to work, he says. I paint for Mac during the day and for Ruby at night. I nap when I can. But my nighttime picture isn't quite right. It's big, that's for sure. When I place all the pieces on the floor of my cage side by side, the cement is almost completely covered. But something is still missing. Bob says I'm crazy. There's Ruby, he says, pointing with his nose. There's the zoo. There are other elephants. What's wrong with it? It needs one more thing, I say. Bob groans. You're being a temperamental artist. What could be missing? I stare at the huge expanse of colors and shapes. I don't know how to explain to Bob that it isn't done yet. I'll just have to wait, I say at last. Something will come to me, and then I'll know my painting is finally ready. Temperamental means moody. First you feel sad, then you feel mad, then you feel happy. Bob says Ivan is just being temperamental. The seven o'clock show. During the last show of the day, Ruby seems tired. When she stumbles, Mac reaches for the claw stick. I tense, waiting for her to strike back. Ruby doesn't even flinch. She just keeps plodding along, and after a while, Snickers jumps onto her back. Twelve. I lie in my cage with Bob on my stomach. We are watching Julia do her homework. She doesn't seem to be enjoying it. I can tell because she is sighing more than usual. Again, for the hundredth time, or maybe the thousandth, I wonder what is missing from my painting. And for the hundredth time, or maybe the thousandth, I don't have an answer. Dad, Julia says as George passes by with a mop, can I ask you a question? May I, George corrects. Ask away. Julia glances down at a piece of paper. What's the difference between the word spelled P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L and the one spelled P-R-I-N-C-I-P-L-E. The first one is the head of a school, like Miss Garcia. The second one is a belief that helps you know what's right or wrong. He smiles. For example, it's against my principles to do my daughter's homework for her. Julia groans. <sighs> if I'm going to be an artist when I grow up. Why do I need to know how to spell? <laughs> With a laugh, George heads off. Poor Julia, I think. Gorillas get by just fine without learning how to spell. All those endless letters, those sticks and circles and zigzags, filling up books and magazines, billboards and candy wrappers. Words. Humans love their words. It leap up. Bob goes flying straight into my pool. A word. You know how I feel about wet feet, Bob yells. He scrambles out of the water, shaking each foot in dismay. I look out my window at the billboard. I can still hear Mac's voice in my head. Come to the Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade, home of the one and only Ivan Mighty Silverback. 
I count to 12. And then I count again, just to be sure. H. I lay out 16 pieces of poster board, four down, four across, a perfect square. What are you up to? Bob demands. I'm guessing it doesn't involve sleep. It has to do with the billboard. That sign's a monstrosity, particularly since I'm not featured. Monstrosity. Do you see the word monster at the start of this word? Monstrosity? A monstrosity is something that looks kind of ugly or big like a monster. I grab my bucket of red paint. You're not on the billboard because you're not in the show, I point out. Technically, I don't even live here, Bob says with a sniff. I am homeless by choice. I know, I'm just saying. I study the billboard. Then I make two fat lines, like broom handles. Another fat line connects them. I stand back. What do you think? What is it? No, wait, let me guess. A ladder? Not a ladder, I say. A ladder. At least, I think that's what they're called. I have to make three more. Bob cuddles up to not tag. Why? He asks, yawning. Because then I'll have a word. A very important word. I dip my fingers into the paint. What word? Bob asks. Home. Bob closes his eyes. That's not so important, he says quietly. Nervous. All day long, I knuckle walk in circles around my cage. I'm so nervous I can't nap. I can't even eat. Well, not very much, anyway. I'm ready to show Julia what I've made. It has to be Julia. She's an artist. Surely she'll look, truly look, at my painting. She won't notice the smudges and tears. She won't care if the pieces don't quite fit together. She'll see past all of that. Surely Julia will see what I've imagined. I watch Ruby trudge sullenly through the four o'clock show, and I wonder, what will happen if I fail? What if I can't make Julia understand? But of course, I know the answer. Nothing. Nothing will happen. Ruby will remain the main attraction at the Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade, conveniently located off of I-95, with two shows at 4, 7, 2, 4, and 7, 365 days a year, year after year after year. Showing Julia. It's time to show my work. The mall is silent, except for Thelma, the macaw, who is practicing a new phrase. Uh-oh! Julia is finishing her homework. George is sweeping outside. Mac has gone home for the night. I grab knot tag and carefully pull out the folded papers. So many paintings. Page after page, piece after piece of my giant puzzle. I pound on my glass, and Julia glances over. Fingers trembling, I hold up one of my paintings. It's brown and green, a corner piece. Julia smiles. I display another picture, and then another, and another, and another, each one a tiny part of the whole. Julia looks confused. But what is it? She asks. She shrugs. It doesn't matter. It's pretty just as it is. Uh-oh, says Thelma. No, I think. No, it does matter. More paintings. George calls out to Julia. He's done for the night. Grab your backpack, he says, and, and hurry. It's late. Gotta go, Ivan, Julia says. Julia doesn't understand. I have to find the right pieces. I dig through the pile. They're here somewhere. I know they are. I find one, another one, another. 
I try to hold four of them up against the glass. Bob, I say, help me, hurry. Bob grabs paintings with his teeth and drags them to me. One by one, I shove pictures through the window crack. They crumple and tear. There are too many pieces. My puzzle is too big. Careful, Ivan, Julia says. Those might be worth millions someday. You never know. She arranges the painting into a neat stack. I suppose Mac's going to want to sell these in the gift shop. She still doesn't understand. I shove more out the hole and more and more, all of them, one after another. So Ivan's been painting, has he? George says as he puts on his coat. A lot, says Julia with a laugh. A whole, whole lot. You're not taking all those home with you, are you? George asks. I mean, no offense to Ivan, but they're just blobs. Julia thumbs through the towering stack of paintings. They might not be blobs to Ivan. Let's leave those by the office, George suggests. Mac will want to try selling them. Although why anyone would pay 40 bucks for a finger painting a two-year-old could do, I don't know. I like Ivan's work, Julia says. He puts his feelings into them. He puts his hair into them, George says. Julia waves goodbye. Night, Ivan. Night, Bob. I press my nose against the glass and watch her walk away. All my work, all my planning wasted. I look at Ruby sleeping soundly. And suddenly, I know she'll never leave the Big Top Mall. She'll be here forever, just like Stella. I can't let Ruby be another one and only.